Uh, welcome, everyone. The uh, webinar is on envisioning uh, the software development paradigm shift, um, DevOps, Gen AI, and beyond. I'm really excited to explore with you the transformative impact of emerging technologies, um, and uh, particularly generative AI, and uh, what does it mean? Uh, so what's, what's the impact of it on the future of software development and the DevOps practices? So I hope we will uh, we'll explore it, it together. I would uh, like it to be as interactive as possible. Please feel free to put in questions on the chat. And there will be some interactive polls uh, during the session. So please uh, participate in those. So setting the context, we are actually you know, witnessing uh, a technological revolution driven by advancements in artificial intelligence, especially in the field of Gen AI. Um, we're not going to talk about the technicalities of Gen AI in this, but uh, what we're going to explore is how these cutting edge technologies are poised to reshape the software development landscape as we know it, um, which is obviously you know, ushering in a paradigm shift that will redefine the way we approach software creation delivery and um, operations. Now, the rise of AI-assisted software development, uh, what, what, what is it? So, so imagine a world where Gen AI plays a pivotal role in automating various stages of the software development lifecycle. From requirements gathering and design, to coding, testing and deployment, and we're going to talk about um, a particular use case, um, an industry use case, actually a live industry uh, or a couple of industry use cases at the end of the session where it's going to come to life. Um, and uh, so as I was saying, you know, coding, testing, de deployment, um, AI powered code generation obviously is becoming very, very common now. Um, optimization and intelligent refactoring could become the norm. This, uh, this particular shift has the potential to accelerate development cycles, foster innovation, and unlock new levels of efficiency and, and productivity. Um, I'm going to talk about a um, particularly referred to a McKinsey study and, and the Harvard Business Review um, article by Bernard Marr. If any of you are interested in actually reading it and going uh, uh, into details about that, please put that in the chat. I'll be happy to share that uh, or, or share the links to it, and you can have a look look um, in that. Um, so we've got a we've got an interactive poll, um, and uh, there should be a poll coming up on your screen as we speak. And Simona, please uh, tell me when you've got the um, responses for, from the poll. Majority think yes. Okay, fantastic. So um, that's, that's quite interesting. That's, that's, that's amazing because um, uh, according to the McKinsey study that I was talking about, the software developers can complete coding tasks up to twice as fast with Gen AI tools. The research found that documenting code functionality or uh, maintaining the code can be completed in half the time. Writing new code in nearly half the time and optimizing existing code in nearly two thirds the time when using Gen AI based tools. Uh, the Harvard Business Review article uh, also uh, highlighted that those who learn to leverage Gen AI will likely outperform their peers uh, creating more value for their organization. And uh, it's kind of, you know, uh, also share, uh, the poll showed that um, everyone agrees, uh, or almost everyone agrees uh, to that. Um, excellent. So we are we are at, at DASA Connect, and we're going to talk about DevOps, and, and fundamentally, you know, what are the, uh, the impact of, of Gen AI, particularly on the DevOps, principles um, and uh, as as we, we we go on to explore the paradigm shift uh, it's crucial to understand how this technology will influence the core principles that underpin 
the DevOps practices. So uh, let's let's look at it in in slightly more detail. All right. So we all know, you know, automation is a core principle of uh, DevOps. So Gen AI has the potential to enhance the automation principle by enabling AI-powered code generation, as we talked about, uh, the testing, infrastructure provisioning, configuration management, amplifying the speed and the scalability. The McKinsey study uh, also predicts that by 2025, which is next year, that's scary, 80% um, of DevOps workflows will be automated using AI-driven tools and platforms. Um, that's a big, 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 big impact. Uh, and, and as we see, you know, uh, Gen AI actually is bringing uh, to life uh, this particular principle of uh, DevOps. Now, going on to, on to the next one, yeah, which is, uh, you know, everybody, whenever we talk about DevOps, it's about CI, CD, it's continuous integration, continuous delivery, and how is that going to get impacted by, uh, by Gen AI? So AI-driven code reviews, testing, deployment, uh, it could accelerate CI, CD pipeline, while code generation and optimization align with, with uh, you know, delivering high-quality software um, incrementally. Um, Again, going back to the McKinsey report, um, organizations that leverage AI in, the, in their CI CD pipelines can actually experience a 30% reduction in time to market and a 40% decrease in software defects. That is quite a significant impact if we uh, look at uh, the entire timeline of, of CI CD. And uh, if we are able to uh, even achieve a significant percentage of what McKinsey is, is suggesting, uh, software development could, could drastically change. It can transform uh, from what it is today. And again, you know, towards the end, we're going to look at it, that how um, some, some of the organizations are already doing that uh, within, within their uh, software development lifecycle. So let's let's look at the next one, collaboration and communication. Again, you know, one of the core principles of of DevOps. Uh, so Gen AI, what what can Gen AI do there? So it can obviously you know, facilitate knowledge sharing, uh, document generation, and that's that's going to have a you know Gen AI is going to have a big impact on uh, the ability to to share and generate documents. Uh, you know, effective communication within the De uh, DevOps teams. Um, so again, you know, natural language processing capability, that's, that's going to be massive uh, because it will it'll enable the teams uh, to, to communicate uh, globally. So you will be able to, uh, you know, impact uh, global teams using Gen AI. Um, we can look at, you know, we can see that uh, tools, obviously the most famous one, ChatGPT, uh, can be used as virtual tutors. Uh, explaining complex technical concepts and facilitating knowledge transfer. Yes, I, I, I agree. I, I, I will agree that uh, we have not reached to a stage where we can 100% trust Gen AI and whatever is, uh, is getting created by, by ChatGPT, but um, I am confident that, that it's going to get better and better to, to a degree where uh, the more technical um, side of of training will actually be uh, foolproof. Uh, where we're going to see more, uh, you know, fluffy um, kind of output, those those are going to be uh, on on the non technical side, uh, and uh, obviously, you know, there will be doubts around uh, the capability on that uh, in that area. So let's let's go to the next one monitoring and uh, feedback loops. So intelligent monitoring, there will be a lot of that. Uh, the ability to, to actually carry out intelligent monitoring, log analysis, incident detection uh, can go very, very high. It can, you know, uh, Gen AI could enable uh, proactive issue identification, continuous improvement through data-driven insights. Um, 
the ability to do things faster, cheaper, better um, will, will drive um, a lot of these changes. Um, research suggests that uh, you know, AI-powered monitoring and analytics can lead to a 25% reduction in operational costs and a 30% increase in system uptime. Again, massive improvement from where we are today. Um, and no wonder um, organizations across the board are looking at Gen AI um, and trying to see how um, it can be leveraged across the board. All right, moving on to the next one. So culture and, and mindset. So um, embracing Gen AI will actually uh, require a shift in mindset. So it, it, it will need to, uh, you know, we need to develop a culture of continuous learning, um, adaptation and responsible AI adoption within the DevOps teams. Um, I, I am old enough to, to remember when sort of, you know, computers started becoming main, mainstream within organizations. And uh, we've seen the, the sort of change management that was needed uh, you know, across the board um, to, to get to the level of adoption that we have today. Um, personally, I believe Gen AI is going to, going to have uh, that level of impact um, on corporate teams. Um, it's, it's not going to be about or we need to learn Gen AI because you don't need to learn Gen AI after a certain point in time. It is going to be inbuilt in everything that we are going to do. And therefore, it's just going to become a, a natural way of doing things. And, and therefore, we're going to look at a completely new uh, way of, of, of delivering our work, whether that's software, whether that's research, or, or anything else. Um, and that is. The reason why we are saying that it is um, a paradigm shift um, and not uh, not just a just a change uh, within the whole thing, right? So um, you know uh, the 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 research says uh, unleashing the developer productivity with with, with Gen AI, uh, you know you can boost your productivity uh, massively, and that that. That is what everyone's looking at. Um, I'm a high user of, of Gen AI at the moment, and I particularly have seen, um, uh, you know, I can I can use Gen AI on my day-to-day -day, uh, delivery. Um, by no means I'm an expert. I'm not, um, I cannot code Gen AI for, uh, for my living, but um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a massive change in the way we have started doing things and um, how we are now trying to use Gen AI as a core piece of strategy uh, to see how we uh, change things within, within organizations. So we come to the next interactive segment and Simona is going to put the poll up for all of us. And uh, once we get the answer, Simona, if you can Tell us what the uh, what it looks like. Wow. So that, that, that that's that's really interesting, Simona, because um, you know, uh, in that case, the audience really thinks that Gen AI is going to have uh, an impact across the board on all of the principles, and that sort of proves our point that it's a paradigm shift. It's a it's a it's a totally different way of looking at software development lifecycle or you know life as a whole. With with Gen AI, uh, you know, within within the DevOps framework, that's 
that's fantastic feedback actually uh the, you know it's it's very um intriguing um and interesting to be honest um so uh transforming the software development uh paradigm so we we um we looked at um a couple of articles and at the moment you know as you can expect uh, things are mostly at an ex experimental level and as i said you know there are very very few organizations who are at a um, at a stage where it's in production so anybody saying that oh you know we've got gen ai um please take it with a pinch of salt because uh, i doubt uh, how much of that is really really into um, uh, production really uh, but however you know coming back to this uh, to this research uh, you know so it says that we can expect several paradigm shifts in how software is is developed so generating code um, from natural language uh, code validation and a shift towards a manufacturing model um, and and an emphasis on a on on AI model governance um, that is a very big word the governments and um, we're going to see more and more uh, regulations and uh, more and more eyeballs on these AI models are going to be uh, out there, uh, not only to test um, the the areas of uh, you know intellect. Change. Yeah. I have I've changed changed to a different microphone. That that's fine. Um, yeah, something happened. I'm I'm so so sorry to the audience. It's it's uh, um, you know again we are not using Gen AI while delivering this, so we we had glitches. Um, apologies for that. Uh, right. So uh, can you give me a cue as to where you lost lost me? Sure, 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 sure. I think uh, so. So one of the, you know, the big, the biggest word on this particular slide for me is governance. And I was talking about governance, where uh, you know it's going to be uh, 
immensely important going forward as Gen AI is going to get more and more pervasive across the board. We're going to look at, uh, you know, how do we how do we create and maintain guardrails? Um, what what will be uh, you know what will be the security uh, features? Security is going to be absolutely uh, paramount um, as as AI is going to take take its uh, um, own place within within the organization. So uh, it is going to shift towards the manufacturing model, and I did uh, sort of um, hear one of the one of the speakers talk about um, software development being being a creative process. Uh, yes, I sort of agree uh, with with the speaker till now, but uh, going forward, if we are if we are actually moving more and more into a into a Gen AI model for software development, uh, that creative process is going to go away. Um, yeah, I, and, and we're gonna get into a more manufacturing model, a more standardized model, uh, you know, a more industrial model of creating code. Um, it's good and bad. The good thing is that, uh, you know, coming back to the DevOps principles, it's gonna be standardized. Uh, the improvement and, and the continuous delivery will be easier. Uh, handing over from one team to the other is going to be easy. Uh, so therefore, uh, you know, the core of DevOps principles will, uh, will actually get accentuated by Gen AI rather than getting impacted. So, uh, so that's, that's actually a good thing. That's a good thing for for uh, you know, for DASA, for that's a that's a good thing for for practitioners like us, um, because uh, the more and more we sort of you know adopt uh, the Gen AI principles, uh, we can we can see that we can deliver uh, the the development life cycles uh, even more um, uh, efficiently, rather. Um, as we see, you know, the, the, the more, uh, so, okay, let me, let me complete this. So more manual, uh, uh, sorry, less manual coding will be required as we talked about it. You know, there will be greater emphasis on managing the supply chain risk and uh, the AI model governance to ensure secure and trustworthy AI adoption as, as we talked about. Um, new AI driven paradigms could accelerate the application integration and um, enable the real, actually codeless, self-healing integrations through natural language requirements. It's a big word to say, but um, we have been sort of experimenting with NLP and how um, you know citizen developers can come in or or uh, low code, no code. We have seen for the last couple of years um, taking center stage, and people are saying that oh, that's that's the paradigm shift. But we are kind of, you know, getting to a point where you can literally talk to, to an AI model and say, hey, you know, I, I want to develop uh, this software model. Uh, can, you, can you do that for me? Or I want to develop this, this particular algorithm to deal with a particular data set. Um, and hey, presto, um, you've, got a, you've got a developer sitting with you um, for 20 pounds a month. Uh, twenty dollars a month. Uh, who's going to do that for you without any mistake? And um, you can make as many changes as you want. So, you, so your chain management is pretty easy in that. Um, so that's that's the that's the thing, isn't it? So what 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 are what's going to happen to the developers? What's going to happen to 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 the roles of uh, um, you know that that a traditional developer is playing uh, today? Well, some of them will transition into managers of, uh, of AI agents. Uh, they'll become, you know, defining, uh, uh, they'll start defining the goals, the constraints, and, uh, you know, the high level requirements while AI handles uh, the, the actual technical coding tasks. So let's look at a, uh, a particular use case. So, so I've got, um, you know, uh, for four different um, real life use cases where we are seeing that Gen AI, Gen AI is actually being used. This uh, particular slide is from an organization which is actually implementing Gen AI. I cannot name them uh, here, 
um, because I should not. Uh, but if, if any of you are interested, please uh, message me directly. I'll, I'll be happy to have a chat. I'm not associated with them, but um, I, can, I can always uh, guide you on that. So again, you know, um, in, in the first uh, sort of use case, we are seeing that requirement creation, completion, conflicting and incorrect requirement analysis, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's already uh, happening. Um, a US-based health insurance company, um, it's a marketplace platform. Uh, it's already using Gen AI to, to do design generation, design analysis, and UI design. Um, there's a particular telecom and, and, a, and a ERP product engineering team, which is uh, using it for uh, you know, code understanding, code generation, code migration, bug fixing. Um, you know, migration of Xamarin code to, to Kotlin in low cost and uh, short duration. So they've already started achieving cost savings. They're looking at, uh, you know, already banked 30% cost savings uh, in, in code migration, which is fantastic. Um, you know, uh, we're looking at people already doing unit test generation. So, so test engineering is going to be uh, massive you know, quality engineering test test engineering processes and in this particular uh, case we we are we are seeing that they sort of achieved 70 percent coverage in test case generation using gen ai so uh we we have uh, we can see that it's functional it's already in production although this is this is sort of a a rare case and and that's why i wanted to present it uh that uh, people are already sort of doing it and doing it to a level where organizations have started getting real benefits to the extent of 30% cost savings using Gen AI. So that is going to uh, definitely mean that it's here to stay. Um, and uh, you know, we, can, we can definitely be sure that uh, we need to up our game as um, users of AI uh, to make sure that we can we can keep up with, with the change in um, in the technology today. Um, so, call to action. So, you know, what's what's the conclusion? Uh, integrating Gen AI fosters innovation and it disrupts the traditional practices, and that's why we are calling it a paradigm shift. Um, our challenges include ethical considerations and responsible AI. Uh, adoption. Um, we need to embrace the paradigm shift with, uh, with an open mind and a willingness to learn. And that doesn't mean that everybody needs to become an AI engineer. Uh, we, need to, we need to learn how to use AI to our benefit uh, in our day-to-day -day work. Um, stay curious, experiment, keep, keep working with it, and together, we're going to shape the future of software development and DevOps. And with that, I'm going to keep make, uh, get it open for questions and uh, very happy to answer any, any questions that uh, you would want me to answer. So we got two, two questions already, um, rather two comments. Uh, so uh, Sarsani, Aryan Reddy, so thank you very much. Uh, it's high time people accept AI as the new normal. Yeah, uh, and the word new normal uh, has become the normal now. <laughs> and uh, uh, embrace it as part of DevOps. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and we have seen through, through the polls, uh, we've kind of uh, proved it, right? Uh, and um, again, from the same person, AI powered code generation is the, is the future. And it's uh, very, very exciting. So thank you. 